Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and today we're going to keep working on our tile set to make a piece of environment concept art like this one. Now, I know I said this was going to take three videos, but the more I practice this series, I realize there's one crucial skill that we need to talk about before we go ahead and do our overlays. Because when you look at this, which is going to be the sort of result we're going for, you'll see that each of these overlays is actually separate. And I do this for a variety of reasons, but ultimately it's about flexibility. So what we need to do is know how to have a whole bunch of different overlays, but not end up with an overlapping mess. And I've already said that the layer is going to be set to the multiply blending mode. And as you've seen in previous videos on the site, I just like this because it works like a glaze layer. Now when this becomes a problem is when you have multiple glaze layers on top of each other, they get this really ugly overlapping effect. And this is not what we want. So if I have my element that I want to use as a detail, I will change its layer to multiply, and then I'm going to put it over what I want to add detail to. So here we have our cool little blue wall. Now then if I repeated that same process with some extra layers, maybe I want some details here, and then there's sort of this base texture here. The problem you immediately see is that they're overlapping one another. This is not what we want. So instead, we are going to make a copy of all these layers on our alternative here. And I'm actually going to change all of them to the normal blending mode. So really this is more like what we want. We want the layers to be independently movable, which is good, that gives us flexibility. But we don't want them to overlap one another in the way that these are overlapping in a kind of bad way. So the way we achieve this is we take all these as normal blending mode, and then we put them into a layer group. Here I have a layer group, which I'm going to start at sort of the default blending mode, put all those layers in it. So now this means that when I move the group, they are together. Now if I were to change the group's blending mode to multiply, now we get the result we're looking for. So here the layers are still independent. You can see I can move them around one by one. But when you zoom in, you can see that they are not having trouble with that overlapping. Here what's happening is it's actually respecting the layer order. So if I were to take the window layer and move it below the other two, it'll disappear completely. If I move it up one in the stack, it'll be halfway covered up by the thing that's above it in the layer stack. And yet all three together, as a layer group, function in the sort of glaze overlay that we're looking for. And this is not specific to the multiply blending mode. I could change this whole group to overlay if I wanted to, and that would have a different look. But I've set up my textures to really work as multiply layers. And in our final example, this is a perfect scenario where this would be a problem. If you have bricks going in one direction for the floor, and then circular bricks for this central pattern, you don't want those overlapping. You essentially want them to be bricks that are laid next to each other, but to still have the flexibility of moving these separately. So how would I achieve that? Well, the general workflow is that I actually bring it into my document as a normal layer, and then just leave it that way. So I'm going to bring it in from my trim sheet. I'm going to do any transforming I need to do to get it in a position. And then when I'm happy with sort of where it sits in my composition, then I'm actually going to drag it into my overlays folder. So when I do that, it inherits the multiply blending mode. So in a sense, each one of these objects was positioned on its own as a normal layer. I got it in the right position and then I brought it into my layer set. And it just happens to have a multiply blending mode on the entire set. So that gives you a great blend of both flexibility but also clean control. All right, now finally, in next week's video, I will show you how to take the trim sheet and to overlay it in the correct perspective and to start to approach an image like this one. But until then, get comfortable with the way that blending modes work when they are inside and outside of layer groups. I know this stuff seems totally technical and abstract, but it's really important to learn. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.